I don't compress the golf ball. I'm not expecting miracles, but just to get some consistency to play within that field as opposed to pulling it left. <coughs> and then you're sending one. Just in the opposite. Just, in, the yeah, opposite just to narrow yeah. sort of that parameter yeah. down as, as such. So strike really yeah. is what we're saying about that compression thing, isn't it? Yeah. Transferring the club head speed to the ball speed. Yeah. And not having too much of a drop off in that. Yeah. So kind of improving the strike a bit, which in turn is likely to get you mm. a bit more distance and control the ball flight a bit better. Because if we're, you know, if we're if we're swinging for the particular shot shape we want, but not getting the strike, you know, if we hit a massive toe when we're trying to fade it or something, then it could just yeah. be a pull or a pull draw or something like that. Yeah. So most of it. Yeah, so that's and then, fairly typical. And then time. suddenly I'll have a swing for and then I'll be pull. Pu pulling it. Yeah. Going further, but it's Yeah, the pull's always do <laughs> that bit further. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Essentially, a pull draw and a fade pretty much have the same swing direction. And that direction is left. What has the biggest influence on where the ball starts, the direction in which it starts, is where that club face is pointing at impact. So we'll say the club face is the orange, and then your path is what influences the curvature of the ball. So essentially, what's happening here with those fades, the club through the ball is moving in the direction of the yellow, so it's swinging along the yellow, but the face is pointing down the orange. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? So it's kind of pointing down the orange, but it's moving down the yellow line. Yeah. What that's producing for you is a ball that starts on that orange line and then just fades off, nice and gentle. And you know, it's a it's a bit high and it's a bit spinny, but in terms of shape, it's a nice it's a nice fade. As long as it's intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which it isn't. <laughs> Which it isn't, there we go. Are you generally kind of setting up to the target and just kind of swinging yeah, to the target? Yeah, I, I, I am aiming much. as a straight shot. Yeah, that is extremely limiting in my mind. Reason being is essentially you have to hit the perfect golf shot to hit that straight shot. And if we're setting up for a straight shot every single time, we're essentially demanding ourselves to hit the perfect golf shot every single time. And you don't need me to tell you, yeah. it's just not gonna happen. Not even for Tiger Ram, <laughs> Tiger, you know, name any top player in the world, it's just not gonna happen. By explaining base path relationship, getting an understanding of that, and then how we can influence that, is going to give you a much bigger margin for error. So we go back to this. This is essentially what you're hitting when you play that fade. And when you get that pull draw, what has happened is that club face has shut down and gone to the other side of that path. So, yeah. so the club is still swinging along the yellow, and whereas before that face was staying open, it's actually now shutting down. So the face is pointing down the orange while swinging along the yellow. What that's going to give you is a ball that starts on the orange and then draws off, which is obviously a nightmare yeah. when you're setting up straight to a target, because yeah. it's starting left and going further left, and it is never at any point going towards the target. What we're going to do is play around with this a little bit, because at the moment you're giving yourself zero margin for error. So by setting up for the straight shot and hoping for the straight shot, you've got to do that. You've got to get face and path absolutely bang on every single time. What this allows us to do, well, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> You're going to feel it instead. Let's just go out onto the grass. You'll recognise this action, I'm sure, yeah. in a swing. And what about this? Yeah, that's the one. That's what you use to close the club yeah. face usually, I, isn't I, it? I do, yeah. I yeah, because you can yeah. see that when you when you try and adjust your face, your path goes with it, yeah. really. So it's actually this one. So keep keep your grip nice and tight. It's actually this motion that we're going to explore. You just want to take your grip, take your normal grip, and then just take your right hand off. What we're going to do is take some toe deep divots behind us. 
So behind your right foot, somewhere back here, just using the wrist, just gonna kind of, and then twist it down into, and even more than that, it's good. Yes. And, and again, so that that heel is completely separated from the floor, right. like that. So we're exaggerating here, obviously, but. Nice. And again, do that a few times. If you just put your right hand on, what you'll do is just keep the handle where it is, but you'll just shuffle to the right a bit. Yeah. So that it's, that club head is then kind of in the middle of your stance. So if you take a shuffle, keeping that handle just where it is, that's it. No, it's gonna feel awkward. I mean, this is extreme, but this is round about the sort of, not that we're talking about positions, but this is kind of where we wanna be when striking a ball. But how do we get there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the million dollar question. All we're gonna do from here is essentially just play tiny little shots. And if you get this right, this is probably- <laughs> I is feel like I can't even hit that ball. Yeah, you because know. you very rarely spend time in this so space. Just a little. Just a little swing, nice and easy, uh, uh, with, a, with a toe deep divot. It's fine. Do that toe deep divot with both yeah. hands now. That's it. That's just getting the feeling of how you can use the wrists to shut that club face. Nice. <laughs> Different strike, innit? Yeah. And then you're able to present the sweet spot to the ball. Nice. Very nice. That's the one. Get that club really traveling out towards me and that butt end traveling towards me first before you really let that release. That's better. Yeah. Nice. What we're doing here is getting a path out to the right for you because it's the opposite of what you currently do, but hopefully with a strike also because you've let that handle travel and then as it's coming down, it's gonna hit the ball and now look at the orientation of this as opposed to you know, what you were doing is probably something a bit more like this. So we can see straight away that that's gonna have a massive influence on how that golf ball flies in the air. One more. And then, as we did before, keep the handle there. Yeah. And then shuffle back so that the club head is between your legs. That's it. And then from there, just a little one, but we're gonna swing out to the right with a toe deep divot and take the divot. Yes. Yes. We've got a divot after the ball and out to the right. So in theory, that should be a fairly well struck draw. Shot key. Ho! Oh. <laughs> How'd that feel? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> that was flushed. That was flushed. That was really nice. Well done. And again. So again, and, and we can go even further right than that. Shot oh, key. Keith. Distance. Yeah. So much difference. So much difference. So much difference. It's weird because it, in my head I feel I'm not actually going to hit that ball. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to swing right over the top of it. Right, okay. In my Interesting. head. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, I guess, fairly normal really because if you're, all we're doing is the opposite from what you currently do. Because yeah, you've been constricted to, yeah. to here and not to miss the ball. Yeah. You don't actually think you can hit the ball by being in this space. Yeah, because, I mean, right you head, didn't yeah. really move very much side to side when I was watching you swing earlier. You never really got over to your left side before hitting a ball. It kind of all happened at yeah. the same time. You kind of, everything went back at the same time and everything came forward at the same yeah. time. And normally when people do that, they tend to swing left because where's my body going when I rotate It's going left. And therefore the club, if I swing everything, together and there's no real separation well the club's coming left because I'm going left I think it's fear I think it's fear of being here that any movement yeah. I'm not going to get back to that yeah so essentially reducing yeah. degrees of freedom in an effort to and it there's some logic to it right if I move less then perhaps less things can go wrong and this sort of stuff you know the simpler I make it you know the more likely it is for me to get the outcome I want 
it's not really the case, not in my mind anyway. Actually, what we want to do is completely free this up, allow the body to move in any which way it so wants. If you just take that, I'll take the club. If you throw it towards that 50. Cool, miss it by a yard, maybe. And then towards that net. Yeah, nice throw. And just dink one into any net you want. And he gets it in first time. Swish, nothing but net, <laughs> right? Did you ever think about restricting an element of movement no. for that? No, just... No, you just gave your body free license to do whatever it needed to do in order to achieve the task that you set it. And yeah, okay, we're hitting a golf ball hopefully a lot further most of the time, but it's the principle that applies. If we allow our body to organise itself in the way in which it wants to organise itself, which is usually going to be non-injurious, like it's not going to damage itself, and it's just going to do everything it needs to do in order to achieve the task, and not do anything it doesn't need to do in order to achieve the task. Yeah. And really that's the kind of state we want to be playing our golf in, but we do need to have a level of intention about our movement as well. Yeah. So it's not a wishy-washy thing of just saying, oh, I want to play a draw, you know, be the ball and, you know, <laughs> yeah, it will yeah. draw and stuff like this and doing it through manifestation. We are going to need to understand the physics of a draw, which is what we went through with the face and path. You're doing yeah. the polar opposite to what you usually do. And so, of course, it's going to feel a bit strange. Soon enough, you'll be able to stand over a ball and say, right, I want to draw this one. That's how my draw feels. OK, yep, yeah, nice, cool. Right, ready to go and off I go. Key. Oh. It's really nice. Different flight there. Yeah, lower, less spin. No spin. More distance. Just what you want, really. But plenty to go, plenty more to do. Shot key. Oh, wow. Such a different feeling, feeling on, the, on the club. Yeah, so, actually, so the yeah. feeling of the ball on the club face. Yeah, well, you know, normally you can feel them yeah. in your elbows. <laughs> yeah. you know? The yeah. ones in yeah. the middle of winter yeah. where you, your whole body judders, yeah. you're like, ouch. Um, but that is essentially feeling centre of percussion and the different sound as well. It's got a much different sound to it. There's a click than a thud. So the click is the ball off the face and then that thud is the bounce working through. Because you've got, you're using your wrist in this plane of motion more. Not only does it allow you to rotate the face on the, the path that you want, but it's bringing sweet spot down to the ball and leading edge cutting into the ground and then bounce working through. So you were actually creating divots before, uh, but that divot was very much then dependent on the direction of your swing. Yeah, that was awesome, Keith. Well done. Thank you. It's just so Keeping everything simple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, try. yeah, you know, just having. I mean, it's a long time ago. I used to hit irons well, but I don't think I've ever been in that that space. Yeah, that there. space. Yeah, and and that's the space we need to be. <laughs> really, if 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 we want the conditions of a shot that you describe that you want, lower, better strike, you know, control of the ball flight, that's where we need to be on that side. But that was awesome. So essentially, there what we. If you love the coaching and want to experience the effects of the training that you see with our pupils, you can purchase the GRFI system yourself by following the link in the video description. You'll get all the equipment and a two hour download covering all the fundamentals, exploring your movement and how you can use the ground and create those all important ground reaction forces and transfer them through to club head speed and experience the gains that you're seeing in the videos.